high life to you, O Lord. Ah, I give my life to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear me. life to you, O Lord. Ah, I give my life to you, O Lord. What joy you bring, Lord everlasting. I call your name and ask for mercy. Come, touch me that I may find rest. What joy you bring, Lord everlasting. I call your name and ask for mercy. Come, touch me that I may find rest. Oh, Lord, hear me, Almighty Savior. I give my life to you, I give my life to you. Oh, Lord, I give my life to you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Epiphany. This Epiphany season, starting right after Christmas, uh, shows us who Jesus is as he bursts onto the scene. That's what we've been seeing all January and into February now. And today is no exception. Once again, with today's scriptures, God is showing us Jesus and what he's all about. Um, welcome to worship. We are glad that you're here this day. Anybody visiting with us for the first time? For all of you, may the grace of Christ meet you as you need him the most this day and as we worship. Our worship continues this, oh, just a reminder with the red pew pad at some time, um, pick that up and pass, uh, sign in and pass that down, down the pew. Thank you. That's a very helpful thing for us. Our worship continues with the um, Epiphany chant on page three. Um, I will sing the first verse and then after a time of silence, I invite you to join me on the second and third verses. God's glory fills the heavens, fills the earth. Let all the earth keep silence. Let all the earth keep silence before God. We 
come in confidence, in faith assured, with heart and conscience rescued, we come renewed in holiness and joy. Please stand for our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who spoke light into creation, who calls us to listen and follow, who sends us to shine like stars. Amen. Let us come before God, confessing our sin. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers and against you. We cherish the values of this world. We cause others to stumble. The earth is wounded by our excess. Have mercy, O God. Forgive us, renew us, and raise us up on eagles' wings, that we may do your will with courage and delight. Amen. Hear the voice from heaven. You are my own, my beloved. God gives power to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Be cleansed, be healed. For in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of your sins and the revealing of God's reign. Amen. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, 
and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem tame root, taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble, to whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is discarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today's psalm is Psalm 147. Let's sing responsively. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. The Lord heals the brokenhearted. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. The Lord heals the brokenhearted. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed with the might of a horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love Alleluia. The Lord heals the broken hearted. 
Please stand for the hearing of the gospel. gospel for this day is written in Mark's gospel, chapter 1. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left, it, left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, when it was, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. I invite the children for the children's sermon. Everybody. How are you guys doing? Good. Excellent. For this morning, I need one volunteer to do something special for me. Will you? Mac, would you go over and sit against the wall over there? Facing us. Yep, right there. Okay. So here we are, gathered together, having the children's sermon and having a good time, and um, we're really enjoying each other's company, and Jesus is here in our midst, and we're having fun together. But there's Max sitting way over there by himself. Hmm. We don't care. We'll just leave him there, right? We'll just, does it matter that Mac is sitting over there all by himself? Yeah. It matters. Yeah. Okay. So, if Jesus were here physically with us and teaching us and all that, what do you think Jesus would do next? Would he invite Mac over? He doesn't. Do you know what he does instead? What he does instead is he, he goes over here himself. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good? Good. What do you think? Are you upset because Jesus left you? Why do you think he came over here? Should we go back and join him? Okay, let's go join him. Let's have a hand for our volunteers. Thank you very much. Okay. There's, a, there's just a funny story today in the gospel where Jesus was teaching people and healing people and then early in the morning he went off and prayed and talked things over with his father, who is God. Um, and when his friends came and said, everybody's looking for you, Jesus says, oh, I'm going to go somewhere else. And you know why? 
there was somebody somewhere else that needed him. Mac was sitting over there all by himself. And Jesus didn't just make Mac come over here. He went to where Mac was. The people who were left felt kind of, well, that's weird. What? Now what do we do? He loved us too. It's okay. That's the kind of God you have. That's the kind of Savior that you have. So whenever you uh, feel, are feeling far away or feeling like you don't belong or feeling like God's forgotten you, Jesus comes to where you are because he cares about you, every last one of you. Not just Mac, but every last one of us. That's what I want you to hear today. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Jesus, when I'm alone, when I'm hurting, when I feel far away, thank you that you know and you come and you love me. Amen. Thanks. You can be seated. and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, he's gone. Rabbi Jesus, he's gone. This morning when we all woke up, he was nowhere to be seen. Simon, he's my son-in-law. Simon and his buddies take off searching for Jesus. They're gone quite a while. 
Finally, they come back without him and start packing their stuff. Well, I asked, did you find Jesus? Where is he? Yep, says Simon, we found him. He was up the lake shore almost a mile, sitting there on a rock, look, gazing out over the lake, praying. So didn't you bring him back for breakfast? No, mother, he says. We told him, Rabbi, everybody's searching for you. But Jesus just said, let's go somewhere else. What do you mean, we asked. Things are going great here in Capernaum. Where do you want to go and why, for heaven's sake? Don't you like it here? But he gets this dreamy, far-off look, shakes his head and says, all those towns, all those, all those villages, all those people, those people caught in their prisons. Let's go so that I can bring them the news too. That's why I came out after all. So he's gone. And you didn't even bring him back for breakfast before he left. Well, Mother, we tried. I think he was concerned that last night's crowd might show up again and mob him here again and try to keep him here. He seems so driven, so eager, so passionate about getting going. And, Mother, we're going with him right now. Andrew, James, John, and I, we're all going with him. We've only come back to gather our stuff and say goodbye uh, and to bring you Jesus' thanks for all your hospitality and all that you've done for us. Well, I don't know what to say to all this. It's all so sudden. Where, I ask, how long? Don't know, Simon tells me. But we'll be back, I'm sure. Jesus is even talking about using our home as his headquarters, his base of operations. Meanwhile, we've got supplies laid up here for you for quite a while. James and John's parents will keep an eye on you, and so will all our neighbors. I just stare at him for a moment, and then I say, and what about my daughter, your wife? I know, Mother. In fact, she and I talked long into the night about this. I think she sensed this was coming even before I did. I'm glad that you and she will have each other until I'm home again. Well, what can I say? Well, you're not going off without breakfast. I pack up some bread and fish and fruit for the five of them, and then hugs and kisses all around, and off they go. So he's gone. Rabbi Jesus was guest in our house for such a short time. And now he's gone, and Simon and Andrew with him. My name is Elizabeth. I'm, Simon is my son-in-law. Maybe you know him by the nickname Jesus gave him, Peter, Rocky. Kind of a funny nickname for someone who dashes off like that. But he really is a good, solid man. This is his house that I live in, his and his brother Andrew's. Jesus came to town to Capernaum just a couple days ago. Yesterday was Sabbath. He and the boys went to the synagogue, and I guess Jesus taught there and made quite a sensation. I hadn't gone because I was sick. I'm never sick, but this was one nasty fever. I had lain in bed for two days, burning with fever, half delirious, no energy at all. Simon comes back from the synagogue with his friends and with Rabbi Jesus in tow. Jesus comes straight to my bed as soon as he hears. He looks at me with such understanding and compassion. Then he takes me by the hand and lifts me up. And at that very moment, the fever is gone. I feel whole and complete and full of energy. Have you ever had one of those fevers that wastes you away and then even when the fever has broken, you've got nothing left, no energy at all? This wasn't like that at all. I felt totally refreshed and restored. I leapt up and said, let me fix you boys something to eat. Hey, don't look at me like that. I know you live in different times. Men's work and women's work mean something different nowadays than they meant back then. But here's the thing. When Jesus raises you up to life, what you want to do is serve. Let me say it again. When Jesus raises you up to life, all you want to do is serve. So we had quite an afternoon. After we had all cleaned up, Jesus took a nap, and the boys filled us in on how Jesus had called them from their fishing nets, come follow me and I'll teach you to gather people in your nets. They told us about his teaching at the synagogue that morning and how he had silenced an unclean spirit and cast it out. Well, that got me thinking about Sabbath. In the throes of my fever, I had forgotten that it was Sabbath. I started to worry a little. Is it okay that Jesus healed me on the Sabbath? Is that permitted? Will he get in trouble with the synagogue leaders? I thought, well, it happened here in the privacy of our home. 
probably nobody else knows. It's probably good if we just keep it to ourselves. Well, some kind of word must have gotten out. Because last evening after sundown, after Sabbath was over, this whole crowd of townsfolk show up around our door. They must have brought every last sick person this town holds and every demon-possessed person they could find. I wonder if anybody stayed home. And Rabbi Jesus, he just heals them all, just like he healed me. And the demons, some of them try to name him and get power over him. I know who you are, Jesus, but Jesus simply silences them, casts them out, frees their victims. It was quite an evening, I tell you. We all fell into bed exhausted after that, but it was still hard to sleep with all the marvels we had seen running through our heads. And now this morning, he's gone. I don't know why he couldn't have stayed. He could have made a wonderful life here. Everybody loves him. Well, almost everybody. But he's gone, and my Simon has gone with him. I suppose there are other people out there that need Jesus too. But still, well, you know how it is. If you're a mother or even a mother-in-law, you know how it is. It is just a little odd, Jesus' decision in today's reading, odd by our standards anyway. He makes this huge one-day splash in Capernaum and then he just leaves. In fact, these are his only words that we hear in the gospel today. The only thing Jesus says, let's go elsewhere. Let's go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim there too. After all, that's what I came out for. Jesus has gotten a rave reception in Peter's town. They mob him. They adore him. Jesus could hang out his shingle. He could build on this opening splash. He could develop quite a good ministry here, start drawing in the crowds from all directions. And those few religious leaders who feel threatened by him, Jesus could win them over in time. Or if not, well, he's got the whole rest of the town on his side. Jesus, everybody's looking for you, says Peter. Everybody's wild about you. But Jesus has just spent some crucial time in prayer to talk. He slipped away in the pre-dawn stillness to talk things over with his father. And he sees things differently. Let's go away. There are so many other towns waiting for my freeing word. So off he goes, leaving Capernaum behind. Off he goes with a ragtag of learners behind him. Off he goes proclaiming his good news. No, actually there's another piece. Did you catch it? Off he goes all over Galilee proclaiming his good news and casting out the demons. There they are again, the demons. Well, that happened to us last week. We ran into these demons. Last week we struggled to understand together what these unclean spirits are, what they're all about, why they're so prominent in Jesus' story. Well, this time the issue is even more pointed. Jesus' ministry, as Mark summarizes it, is not just preaching the gospel, and he doesn't even mention healing in that last verse. Jesus heads off into Galilee, proclaiming his news and casting out the demons. The two go together. We've explored together before what these demons are, and we'll have occasion to do that again. For now, this time, today, let's set aside Hollywood demons. Let's set aside the kind of psychologizing that we so often do. Whatever the mystery of these evil spirits, these spirits who know who Jesus is, these spirits whom Jesus silences and expels so easily, whether they are external and invade people and harass them, or whether they are broken, crushed parts of ourselves, here's the piece that matters today. The unclean spirits crush human life. These are powers, economic powers, social powers, familial powers, political powers, spiritual powers, intellectual powers. These are powers that oppress and dehumanize these are powers that destroy dreams and crush the human spirit. These are powers that enslave and addict. Powers that isolate and divide. Powers that kill hope and spread despair. And for all of our modernness and enlightenment, like we like to think of ourselves, 
We recognize these powers. We recognize them in the news about ISIS. Have you felt that when you've listened to the news? Have you felt there's something evil going on here? Have you felt that rise? We recognize them there. We recognize them in our fixations and our addictions. We recognize them in the darkness of our own hearts. So here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus with a message, but his message is not just talk. His very message breaks the power of these powers. His very message sets victims free. I don't think it's any accident that when Jesus comes to church at Capernaum and teaches, the powers in charge take notice. What are you doing here, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. It's no accident that all the dark, mysterious, enslaving powers wake up to Jesus' presence. And with one word, Jesus silences them, frees their victims, restores dignity and joy, removes the chains, and invites us into his new life of freedom and serving, proclaiming and freeing, preaching his message and casting out the demons. They go together. They're part of the same thing. So what happens when Jesus comes to town? What happens when he comes to your town? Every dark power knows who this is. Every bit of darkness within us, within you and me, goes on alert. We stiffen for the fight. Jesus speaks his freeing, forgiving word of love and breaks off the chains. He takes us by the hand and the fever leaves us and we have all the energy in the world and we rise to serve with him. Let's go somewhere else. That's Jesus' odd word for today. Let's go somewhere else. That means that he knows where you are. He knows that Mac was sitting over there against the wall. He cares enough about your chains so that he doesn't just hang out his shingle in Capernaum and have a comfortable, thriving ministry there. He knows where you are and says, I have to get to you and set you free. Let's go somewhere else. That means that he cares about every last one of us and won't be content until he has set us all free. It means that he's out there with his fishing net, casting it out as far as he possibly can, drawing it back in to draw us back in, all of us. Let's go somewhere else. And he takes Simon and Andrew, James and John, along with him. He takes you and me along with him into every relationship, every arena of your life, into your workplace, into your school, into your circles of friends, into your casual contacts in the grocery store and the auto parts store, into your recreation and your politics and your social life. Let's go somewhere else. I won't be content until I have broken every chain that's why I came. That's why I go to the cross. That's why I burst open the tomb. Amen. At this time, we have the joy of welcoming new members into our fellowship. I'd like to call... Now, not all of the people that are joining are actually here today. There are a few that we have to... Uh, welcome in absentia, but we'll welcome them as well. Let me call the names. And as I call your name, please come forward and stand at the altar rail facing the people. Karen Brown, James Burkett, Christy Deck, Mindy Holbrook, Don and Susan Stadler, Sue and Sarah Thompson, Wayne and Vicki Valentic, Jeffrey Fairwarn, and Mark Wagnold. I'll pass the mic along down here and simply ask you to let them know your names. I'm Christy Deck. Karen Brown. Oh, I'm James Burkett. Susan Stadler. Jeff Verworn. 
Vicki Valentic. Wayne Valentic. Thank you. Please face the altar. Congregation, if you would turn please to page 234 on the front of the hymnal. You can follow along. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold these servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom, to whom you have brought to new life, new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are joining us, I invite you to uh, respond to these questions of profession of faith, to respond together. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Congregation, please stand. I invite you to respond in the words of the Creed along with those who are joining us. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people? to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in, in, in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And I would ask you one at a time to respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh, people of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Would you face the people, please? I invite you to welcome these new members by your applause. At the close of the service, at the beginning of the last hymn, I'm going to ask these folks to come out into the commons and form the uh, classic greeting line so that you have a chance to meet them. I would also invite you as a congregation to wear those name tags for several Sundays in a row now to give them at least a tiny chance of learning a few names. And whenever you um, meet them again, uh, please introduce yourself by name for the first 100 times. 
Um, and after that, you can stop. You may be seated. Thank you. And once you've been seated, please stand for the prayers. Called to know, love, and follow you, O God, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Jesus, Holy One of God, thank you for the urgency of your love that keeps on looking for every last one of us to bring your freeing word and your new life. Bring us along with you, Lord, as you move onward to the next person and the next town. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, Holy One of God, thank you for the gift of new friends and colleagues in your ministry at Bethlehem. Thank you for Karen, James, Christy, Mindy, Don and Susan, Sue and Sarah, Mike and Vicki, Jeffrey and Mark. Bless their, their life and ministry in our midst and bless us for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus, Holy One of God, Keep on moving on to the next town and the next need. Look with compassion on our broken, needy, greedy, terrorized world. Cast out all our dark spirits and set this world free in your forgiving grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Jesus, Holy One of God, come into the midst of our weakness and our need and set us free. Today we bring before you James Benjamin Taylor, Anne's newborn grandson, Linda Geisel, William Little, Gracie Jones, Glenda Skyme, Margie Simpson, Sandy Lindleaf, Megan Berg Whittet, Randy Wood, Joanne Johnson, Bob Lestavka, Polly Nicolaisen and those that we name in our hearts. <coughs> we ask your presence, your consolation, and your promises for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Trusting your love and healing, O God, we commend to you all for whom we pray knowing you will hear and answer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share God's peace with one another.
Please stand. God, as you receive these gifts, receive our hearts and our lives. Bless those who bring these gifts today. Deepen their faith, kindle their joy, and free them to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, by the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the Hear the gospel. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we are communing by intinction, by dipping the wafer into the wine, into the wine or the grape juice. Um, you'll be ushered up the side aisles and you return by way of the center. The first person that you come to will have a wafer for you. There are gluten-free wafers in the bowl on the baptismal font. You'll dip the wafer either in the first cup, that's wine, 
or the cup at the center. That's grape juice. Everything is ready. Your Lord bids you come.